Otherwise, I'm going to have a panic attack. And then also, I'm going to try to record. I don't know how long that reaction stays up there for or whatever. Uh, I don't know. Try to, if you're done, just say, direct it to one person. You call it like that. That way, say, you know, I'll finish my thing and then say G and order Anthony. And just try to like kind of do it like that. So whoever's speaking, say, uh, G, what are your thoughts on that? Or Anthony, what are your thoughts? And then G, once he's done, it'll be Anthony. And it'll kind of have to work like that, I guess. That's great. But that we're makes sense. right now. So we'll figure the fucking stupid goddamn shit out. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the F Word Podcast. It's, I'm your host, G. And with me is Bass and Anthony. We tried recording this once before. The whole thing fell apart like a fucking, I don't know. How? Cards of cards. <laughs> In the fucking wind. It's like, here's an idea. Let's build a house of cards during a tsunami and let's see if it holds up. That's essentially what happened in that first recording. And guess what? It collapsed into a thousand pieces or 52 gotcha. pieces. I guess it'd be 52. So I'm really fucking peeved off right now. But we are going to get this episode done with. And then, yeah, it's going to happen. Uh, week three of social distancing uh and there is a mm. very slim to better than average chance that i might have gotten the covid only because the fucking an employee from the grocery store i went to last week supposedly had it and so i went on saturday yeah i went on saturday and friday no sorry i went on a friday and saturday was when they told the guy to go home and then they released a statement today that one of the employees that they had had it now when i went i avoided everybody but there's only so much you can avoid in there so mm -hmm. that's awesome how's your guys this week was the person uh just to ask a question did that person have any symptoms of a cold or anything prior to like that you know of or was it like one of those things where that person just didn't know? Nobody knows. I don't think they haven't even released whether like who this person was. They haven't released uh, where they're like, where, which position they were in uh, or anything like that. So in terms of actual employees, uh, one of the managers came up to me, but he was like a relatively long, large distance. And then I, I didn't, I used the self checkout. And I don't, I, I'm pretty sure nothing happened. That was a week ago and I haven't, I feel, I feel very, very much normal. But uh, anyways, it just got released today and I'm like, oh shit, it's about to go down here. Mm -hmm. Well, in one week you should know. Hopefully, I highly doubt you'd catch it. I, it's still one of those shitty things where yeah, it sucks that you're in a position. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, how was your guys' week? I can head off. So mine is pretty good. I discussed on the last recording uh, the games I've been playing. I've been grinding Minecraft and Animal Crossing. Uh, Animal Crossing, I have never played before. It's something I just decided to check out because I've been getting a lot of use out of my Switch lately, but I have not in the past. So I want to get more games just so I can kind of figure out what's out there. Uh, so it's pretty fun. I'm enjoying it. It's kind of calm and peaceful. As Vass mentioned last recording, uh, that he was doing a movie a day thing. I've also been doing that. Like, I didn't intend to do it at the start, but I've just been doing that and kind of continuing with it. So in the past week, since we last recorded, I've seen Vivarium, The Platform, The Hunt, 1917, The Gentleman. I rewatched the Impractical Jokers movie. And today I watched Fantastic Mr. Fox and Coraline because I'm doing a paper on Coraline and I just want to see how it held up compared to the book. And then for TV shows, I watched Tiger King and Dark Side of the Ring a uh, documentary on Chris Benoit. And fucking great. Like the platform is probably my favorite thing I saw this week. Uh, super good kind of, I don't know if it's an indie film. It's a Spanish film, I believe. I'm pretty sure that's the language they were speaking in the movie, but it's essentially, uh, reviews say it's kind of a parasite for people who didn't understand parasites. I didn't really make the kind of connection. I thought they were both very good films, but that has been my binge week. That is Spanish, by the way. Okay, good. Didn't want to be racist. Well, I don't know if it'd be racist or discriminatory. But... Ah, people 
would call out racism racism for anything oh man the one review i did it was called them uh from a show called the mechanism and they were speaking mm-hmm. portuguese in there because it's in brazil and i made that mistake and i sent it off so there's probably like a hundred comments most of which were we speak portuguese not spanish and i'm like well fuck <laughs> Like a lot of views for the wrong reason. Uh, Vass. Yeah. So uh, as for games, starting off, I finished Jedi Fallen Order, the main storyline. So that was a pretty sweet game. I always I enjoyed that thoroughly. And I kind of jumped on uh, Need for Speed Payback, kind of an older game and just mindless, kind of just, I don't have to think too much. I just enjoy, I enjoy the vehicles and like the customization and that kind of stuff. Um, and as I was playing it, I, I find I like stuff about it and I, I dislike quite a bit about it in the sense that it, you're limited in like, you know, if you pick a specific vehicle and you build it a certain way, that's all it can, it's all it's good for. If you try to do anything else with it, it's kind of eh, whatever. It doesn't operate the way it should. Um, Cause they really, uh double down on all the classes so you have like you can make a racer car which is like all about obviously racing and on the streets and urban only and then you have your off-road vehicles which are built to be off-road and they can go top speeds on rough terrain and whatever and that's how they're built and you can't to go out of their route their zone i guess you could say it doesn't you can't compete in the sense like so you can't take a car built for off-road and do a race meant for drift or whatever it's just not going to work out for you so and it has a speed cards which is kind of like a a roulette of if you're going to get a good part or if you're going to get a shitty part and if it's the right one you actually need um and if you get a card it's only for that vehicle like you can't transfer it to another car of the same class it's whatever you race with that car that's the card you get and then it's discarded it's done so it's basically useless so i kind of found that i didn't like but overall i still enjoy the need for speed games and just for the mindless uh uh mindlessness of it you just race and go and do this that whatever and follow whatever storyline um tv shows uh i've been watching the man in the high castle and I mentioned how I thought originally there were six seasons, but I, I definitely saw that wrong. There's only four. So I'm almost done season three right now. I got one more season to go. I'm not sure where it's going to end. Um, if they have if four is the finale, like final season, or if there's another one coming, obviously it won't be a while. It'll be a while. Um, but yeah, that's all for TV. And then movies kind of one a day ish. Um, but most recently I watched kingdom of heaven uh very good classic one uh with orlando bloom and grand budapest hotel is one of my favorites from west anderson and uh most recently was knives out i saw that again that was really good so yeah dope um i haven't i haven't seen grand budapest for a long time it's so good Mm it's such a good movie uh i and i haven't played the last i forget the last need for speed i played but I'm pretty sure it was Hot Pursuit for the PS1. Maybe, but I nothing will ever top Need uh, for Speed Underground and Underground 2. Was it Underground 2 for PS2? Maybe. I don't remember. What, remember was that Hot Pursuit one with the cops? We used to play it on PC. Uh, it was Underground. Oh, that Hot Pursuit was like way before uh, uh, Underground. Underground 2 was on PS2. So that was probably the most recent one you've played. Yeah. Yeah, that was Underground 2 was dope as hell. Um, my list consists of watching The Gentleman and Jojo Rabbit for the first time. The Gentleman was awesome, and Jojo Rabbit was absolutely beautiful. I it, I teared up. Soph actually teared up a little bit too, I think. Um, she loved that one a lot, and I did too. It was so, so good. And I think it deserved, in my opinion, I think it deserved a lot more love than it got. However, I haven't seen 1917 or Parasite yet, which Anthony, I know you're sitting there and you're just like, watch fucking Parasite. Watch, you are, I guarantee you guys are going to watch Parasite. And I told you this, you're going to be like, oh, I should have watched it earlier because that's my exact thoughts. Because one guy at work fucking raved about it. I'm like, okay, buddy, calm down. And then I watched it. I'm like, holy shit, this was fucking amazing. It'll happen when it happens. There is no reason why I'm not watching it. Like, it's not like I'm going out of my way not to. I really, really want to see it. I just don't 
do this downloading thing on my own. So there, I, I'm thinking of just like, I don't know, finding somebody that's able to acquire said movie so I can finally watch it. Cause I'm pretty sure I'll really like it. Um, mostly because I, I'm love the movie Snowpiercer. I mentioned it on the show before and he directed it and mm-hmm. Snowpiercer is so good. Like it is so, so good. Um, and then I finished Witcher three, the main story. I still have the two DLCs, but uh, I'm going to put that on the side for now because as I'm working, I was mentioning this last week, I've been listening to video game and movie soundtracks. So Origins was one I was listening to and I'm like, Fuck, I want to play that game again. Mm-hmm. And then I started it and then I realized very quickly how humbly awesome it is compared to Odyssey. I don't know if you, any of you guys have played both, but the between the two, I would say I prefer Origins over Odyssey, even though Odyssey was pretty cool and I'm Greek and the game was in Greece and all that. But Origins, I don't know. There's there's some something really there was something better about it, and I think a lot of it has to do with just the humble nature of the game. Hmm. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, the something about soundtracks it just triggers you. You know what? I'm gonna play that game again. <laughs> oh, that's the most memorable part of any film, mm-hmm. movie, or like game is a soundtrack. Uh, example: I don't know if I talked about this in the podcast. I think I did, but it was the Raimi trilogy, like music. The whole theme did this whenever the new or when the Raimi suit came out in Spider-Man PS4. The first thing I did was put like blast of spider-man music in the background and swing around in that suit Hmm. yeah amazing i was so choked for a second there because not not right now for a second but like five days ago or three days ago because spotify wasn't showing up on my playstation and it i I was trying to download it it wouldn't let me do it or whatever then i found out it the the save file was in the external hard drive that i have hooked up but when i went to the external hard drive it wasn't there so it's pissing me off but like there was there was enough of the there was something there in the other part of it that blocked it from downloading but then i figured out how to do the thing so now i can play my music in the background because origins i'll probably be putting something on i know when i was playing god of war i was playing i was putting led zeppelin in the background and some marvel stuff Mm -hmm. and when i was playing red dead i had the django unchained soundtrack playing (laughs) and it was Mm. perfect it was so perfect. Very um, nice. Yeah, I was talking. Oh, so, so like as we're going through like the week, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it definitely doesn't feel like there's a lot of news out there, and so mm-hmm. I'm trying to find ways to make the show now, which not only sounds downgraded, but like we don't have the news to support it. So, nope. I have something that's interesting. If you please go, like. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, I think this was today or yesterday. Oh, okay. So tomorrow, uh, the news article came out today. But tomorrow, April third, for a limited time, HBO is gonna unleash or unleash. I release about how much? Like I think it said something like ten or a hundred hours of content for free. Five hundred hours of its original programming available to stream for free. Jeez. To, you know, help aid. Uh, COVID-19 self-isolation. So of the list, there's a couple of really big ones that are very surprised. They have all seasons of Ballers, Barry, Silicon Valley, which is an amazing show. Mm-hmm. Like a, a fucking amazing show. Hilarious as fuck. Uh, they have The Sopranos, True Blood, Veep. And they have some documentaries that look pretty interesting. I think the McMillian one is on the McDonald's scam for, or the, I don't know the exact detail, but it's something about the McDonald's monopoly and how it was a scam. I really, I saw the trailer for that. I don't know if it was HBO, but I really want to watch that. And I assume that is, but yeah, that's a pr- pretty big shout out because HBO is one of the more pricey kind of, I don't know, channels to buy. Is it a channel? I guess the channel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It'd be, uh, yeah. yeah. It's one more. It's, yeah, it's one of the more pricey channels to buy. So it's just a big props to them for doing that because they have like a lot of big shows are releasing. Game of Thrones, I'm surprised, but I guess everybody kind of illegally watched that when they wanted to. So they realized it wouldn't be much help to 
release it because anyone who's watched to see Game of Thrones has already seen Game of Thrones. Yeah, that's true. Or has heard enough about it. That's sweet though. That's good for them. Um, I'm like, there's going to be a lot of that, especially early on. Eventually, they're just going to get away with it. Like they're going to take it away, but that's good that they're actually doing it for now. So, do you have to like? get a subscription though of hbo like how are how is somebody who doesn't have hbo going to be able to see this stuff so according to the article it just said you need to go to the hbo now site or app you don't need to sign in and you can just watch it for free off the app tomorrow just tomorrow hmm. uh i don't know if it's just tomorrow but it's starting tomorrow i think it said for a limited time so it's not gonna be a day because yeah. why release a full season or full series if you're just gonna allow people 24 hours to watch it i know some people probably would watch it but i think it'll be i'd say at least a week which is fair like it's free content they don't need to do it so it's kind of i don't have any gripes against it Hmm. yeah no i mean it's that's so pretty good and also for those of you who are listening obviously it's thursday right now so he means friday so you're if you're listening to this on saturday yesterday hbo released a bunch of content for free and just work your way back from there. Oh, I forgot to mention one thing. I and myself and Soph have gotten on the jigsaw puzzle train. And by train, I don't know if there's an actual train, but we've been watching House, and I forgot to mention that as well. So after we watched Jojo Rabbit and the Gentleman last weekend, we went back to binge watching House because we had finished off, like we are up to season two, and then we watched those two movies, and then we chilled out, and then we were back on it. So we're back on binging house, which is super fucking weird because not only is the COVID thing obviously a real thing and it sucks so bad, but like everybody in that show gets this random attack by something just by breathing. And I was, and it just like reinforces the fact that it's like, oh, something can happen literally right now. And this show is just reinforcing that thought. Why am I watching it? Oh yeah, it's dope as fuck. But we're doing that while watching, while making or doing puzzles, making puzzles, doing puzzles, putting puzzles together. Both and, work. Yeah, and so I'm uh, I'm a bit of a puzzle master this week, and I'm super excited for it. And I got two new ones, and one of them is going to be hard as fuck because it's literally Darth Vader in the center is the only the only thing there that differentiates it from the rest of it because the rest of it is just a bunch of stormtroopers. Mm. So put, yeah, yeah, it looks intense. Yeah, put in your mind just an entire backdrop of just stormtroopers that all look the same, and that's eighty percent of the puzzle that you have to put together. It's going to be. It's either going to make Soph and I stronger as a couple, or we're just going to break down. <laughs> I see both. Time times. will tell. Yeah. yeah, there's that other all white puzzle too, like no black whatsoever. Oh, yeah. all white. That one's another one that'll be. Yes. Interesting for people to tackle. Yes. At least there's, but even the stormtroopers are just like, they're all the same. Like, how do you differentiate one from the other? So that'll be fun. Oh, yeah. I don't know how long it's going to take me. We're doing one right now where we're finishing one up now that is a, um, it's got a bunch of different boxes, and each of those boxes has a place in the world. Right, it's mm-hmm. got something unique to that. So Bourbon Street, it's got the sign, um, it's got the Parthenon there, the pyramids of Egypt, it's got all sorts of really cool places around the world. Uh, and that one's hard, but at least there's enough. There's different colors and patterns in each of those sections that we can kind of put it together. Now we're in the part where like we've got fifty blue pieces, and we have no idea which blue goes in each one because where we weeded out the easier ones. Mm. But anyways, I thought that was sweet. Yes. Um, 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 apparently GameStop is honoring pre-orders. Like you can go get your pre-order at GameStop. And the reason I know this is because I was messaging Arturo. And mm-hmm. Arturo was saying that, where is my message with him? He said he pre-ordered Resident Evil. The, like the Red Resident Evil 3 remake a few weeks ago. But with everything going on, then all the stores closing, he thought he wasn't going to get it. So he's just going to bite the bullet and be like, okay, well, I'll get this after. But he got a call from GameStop and they're they like, if you had a pre-order, you were able to go there and get it. So I thought that was it. Hmm. And then he mentioned... Well, he, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to add, he's very lucky because I know Jesse 
who works at EB Games locally here, uh, they it's kind of just your shit out of luck if you pre-ordered that because they're not working, they're not getting any shipments, they're just kind of chilling at home, isolated with the rest of us. So kind of must depend on your location or I don't know if he's doing it. I don't think he is, but it might be a possibility. Yeah, maybe. But it was uh, he sent me two things that were really funny. So after I posted the picture of that puzzle on Instagram, I had the I will always love you little song thing, which I didn't know you could do that on Instagram. I learned something new. And then he sent me this and I thought it was the most brilliant thing. You guys know the song, right? From Whitney Houston. <laughs> uh, yeah. I will always love you. Okay. So he's like, I always say that this is one of the most underrated, overrated songs ever. He's like, it's so played out from pop culture, yet so beautiful when you actually listen to it. And I, <laughs> anyone put it that way, and it was fucking brilliant. And I, I straight up told him, I'm like, I'm putting it in my show notes. <laughs> it's such a great, it's a very good point. That. Yeah. It's so very astute, very mm-hmm. apt apt analysis of that song okay where do we go from here guys because um again i've got i got a just witnessed a murder on oh. uh at the photo uh no on facebook so one of the like funniest thing is hearing my mother complain about certain people on facebook uh because i had followed them a long time ago because i was just tired of having them fill up my fucking fee 24 <laughs> 7 uh, but this one person who will remain nameless because there's no like they're nice people it's just they post too much on fucking facebook uh but anyway they're they've been complaining about the coronavirus their local owners they own businesses and they've been complaining about coronavirus there's like multiple people too anyone who complains about the coronavirus self-isolation and those who like do not follow the self-isolation you're only delaying the inevitable the longer you <laughs> fight against this the longer yeah. we will be in this so bite the bullet because I am losing track of time. I thought today was fucking Tuesday until <laughs> 5 o'clock. Mm. And I'm going mad. But basically, uh, Tino, who is kind of a friend of the show, I don't think he watches, but he is a keyboard warrior. But not in the sense where he just goes around. Like, he backs up his points. And he wrote this whole fucking, like, paragraph under this girl's comment saying, Karens on Facebook aren't the expert on this. Actual doctors are. Because they're, you know, angry that they just stay in. And this post was saying, why didn't everything shut down in 2009 when the swine flu infected 57 million, causing 12,000 deaths in the U.S.? <laughs> and he went off and fucking murdered her in saying that uh, smaller businesses aren't the priority here. It's like individuals or families' health and safety, and that's always going to be the primary, yeah. and that's how it should be. And this whole pair, I'll send it to the chat because it's super fucking funny. But I just, I love seeing people get shit on for their stupid ideas and ideologies on Facebook when they talk big and then someone else who has the facts. Because I love doing this on Entertain Facts, just fucking smacking people around and they don't know what they're talking about. But it's always just so fun to like read. No, that's, that's, that's it. There's no moral to the story. It's just, it's, it was funny. I like that. That's <laughs> I, that's why I don't look at Facebook anymore. By the way, they uh, Zoom used to allow us to do as many as long as we want, but they're giving me a time limit, so we have seven minutes and fifty four seconds, which is probably oh, fun. No. Yeah, it yeah, we fuck out. I got a couple of things here. Go for it. Uh, okay. uh, so Star Wars. So they call it Star Wars actor Andrew Jack. Uh, he dies from COVID nineteen actually, and it's funny how they he's he's known as a star wars actor but this guy is way bigger than that like he played on the force awakens and the last jedi as uh madge general emmet and emmet i probably butchered that and but bigger than that he has uh a dialect coach he's a professional dialect coach and he's four decade long film career and he worked uh, with 200 actors and that's i'm i'm reading verbatim from the global mm-hmm. news anyways but he worked on marvels the avengers series indiana jones and the last crusade and peter jackson's Lord of the rings so that's pretty huge the guy like the great dialects and stuff he he might have created elvish he might have been way like in the lead of all that so that's pretty amazing the fact that he's known as star wars actor i think that undercuts his entire uh career to be honest um but yeah, I don't know. 
Star Wars is so mainstream. Like yeah. all the fans just kind of love yeah. this guy showed up in a cameo. Star Wars, he's yeah. associated with us. And I do agree. I do feel like it demeans from his overall legacy, but also Star Wars kind of is what's going to sell the headline. So it's, yeah, it makes sense as a business move, but it's also just mm-hmm. dumb. But it is a big deal, though. Yeah. I mean, like, if you yeah. say that this person was on Star Wars, oh, you know, it's like, oh, oh yeah. yeah, Star Wars, it's still like, oh, like you, you have to take it's kind of like what Arturo said about I will always love you. It's the most overrated, underrated thing ever because really, when you think about it, yeah how big star wars is even though it's mentioned so many times and we're kind of overhearing it mm-hmm. yeah at the end of it though it's still like fuck it's star wars <laughs> like mm-hmm. still fucking huge mm-hmm. what was the other one you said bass uh well uh, john krasinski did that uh, some good news he has a new youtube channel so and he's only he's only talking good news so that's so funny because i have that written down here i didn't know because the news last week when we were talking, yeah. um, the 15 year of yeah, it celebrated it. The office, yeah, yeah. So I saw a photo of John Krasinski, right? But I didn't know it was the mm-hmm. SGN that he started. Yeah, yeah. And on the two office ladies YouTube channel slash podcast. And uh, yeah, uh, Pam and Angela, the yeah. two actresses. Yeah. So they've been like going through the office and watching it and commenting like that's their podcast. They started it recently. They had Kevin, mm-hmm. Malone, like the actor that uh, ba- Bill Baumgartner, I think his name is, uh, yeah. was doing the chili recipe that from what he spilled. Like, and now John Krasinski is doing the SGN through their channel, and so it's like this kind of office reunion of so, mm-hmm. which I thought was awesome, and it was so good too. Like, it's actually like, oh, yeah, it's yeah, it was awesome. Oh, I thought it was great. Yeah. And, and I, then I on like, top of that, they have, uh, what is it? The iHeart uh, iHeart Radio, I guess, is doing like living room concerts. So like all these big artists are doing concerts from their houses, which is pretty sweet. And of course, the Backstreet Boys did I Want It That Way, which was amazing. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. I think anytime they do anything is pretty awesome because mm-hmm. I am I am unashamed of my adoration for 90s or early 2000s pop yeah. so good but you know what you got to give them credit these guys sound great and they're just recording with their phones like mm-hmm. they probably don't have any, anything crazy and no auto tune no cleaning no nothing and you know what they did still have the voice they still got it <laughs> <laughs> they still got it uh mm-hmm. like i have with the three minute and 40 second mark oh you know, that ha- this has to be brought up because I know Anthony mentioned something about stupid Facebook stuff. Um, I didn't realize this until Monday, but Marvel did the ultimate cringe fucking thing I could ever have imagined. I couldn't even, I don't think you can make this shit up, really. But mm-hmm. the fact that they came up with uh, two Marvel heroes, non binary Marvel heroes that are black called snowflake and safe space. I'm going to say that again. They made heroes called snowflake and safe space. Very creative. Yeah. Oh my God. They took a minute thinking up that one. (laughs) I I couldn't believe it. I, I like this can't be real. And so like I found a bunch of articles. I found ones even from the UK. And not only, you know what the funny thing is? People are shitting on them for doing so, which they should be shitting on them for doing so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what's even funnier is that the people that are shitting on them are just as cringy, but they're hypocritical, not realizing how cringy this actually is. And it's just like, what the hell? And the reason I brought up that they're like they're black superheroes is there are so many other races out there like they could have made them like the rock racially ambiguous mm-hmm. but they went with they went with straight black and it's just like it's it, they they wanted to the guy said the connotations of the word snowflake in our culture right now are something fragile and snowflake is a character who's turning it into something sharp and so they're using these phrases so that snowflake and and safe space become cool words let me tell you something they won't be. What do you guys have? Yeah, no. 
I think that's I, I, I there's nothing more to say it's just why stop try, trying to be hip <laughs> stop trying to appease to every single fucking kind of subgenre of fans out there that, that is why I feel like DC wins in a comic book race DC does their own thing they stick by the books they play it relatively safe but they still make great stories if they want to add new characters they can like making batwoman gay like that was fine it made sense it didn't affect her character because there's always you no know, time to have a new batwoman or batgirl and they can do it that way but marvel just obviously is kind of trying to just tap into that market and they just do it so fucking shitty every time because i think they've done something like this before are trying to turn characters gay and people are like listen man just stop just don't do it just yeah it's just annoying it's just so stupid and so cringy and so unnecessary. So but silly. So silly. So silly. Um, but it's got the less than a minute note here. Uh, I don't know. Maybe this 40 minute thing will actually be good. Keep us, uh, keep us in line. Um, but mm-hmm. Gentlemen, anything else? Yeah. That's all I got. One last note I want to add because I found it really funny because I'm going to be watching How I Met Your Mother. Uh, when I was watching The Gentleman, all I could think of is The Gentleman! Oh, yeah. The gen- One blip episode. Which is even funnier because in House, uh, the girl that plays Zoe is in House. She's one of the doctors. Yes. Before this thing goes off, I'm going to sign off here because this thing's probably going to go down. And just like that, it decided to just cut out uh, right away, just like we thought it was. Um, all right. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of The F Word. You could find us on Instagram at The F Word Podcast. Uh, we now have lost the dots, which is good. So it's not the dot. It's just The F Word Podcast. Uh, we got facts on there now. It's an amalgamation of classic entertained facts and The F Word with all sorts of stuff. So it's really good. And... You can find me on Twitter at the F G. You can email us at the F Podcast at gmail.com. Um, you can go to bio.fm slash the F Podcast and find us there. So yeah, until next time, I'm G. It was that was Bass and Anthony. And we are now officially out. <laughs>